everybody welcome <laughs> the legend. I don't even need to say his name, but I will say it. And I always know Mikey as Michelangelo when I first saw that guitar video that I was trying yes. so hard to learn how to play. But please welcome Michelangelo Badio. I, if you don't mind me calling you Shred God as a, as a fanboy today, is it okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's fine with me. <laughs> yeah, everybody get those horns up. Oh, you see all those horns up there from the fans there yes. on the screen? You. Hey man, it's such a pleasure to have you here on Twitch today. I've been a fan for so many years. I've learned so much stuff from your guitar playing. It's, um, it's really insane that we you know, with now that you know, I can get you here um, to, to hang out. Are you interested in watching some of these old videos of yourself? And yes. give me a little reaction. Tell me a little bit about maybe, you know, <laughs> what, what was it like? You know, show, I, I'd like to get your reaction. Now looking back at some old, old videos I found on the internet. You, you into that? <laughs> no, I'm totally into that. I, I'm, I, can, I can critique myself, I hope. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> May the force be with you. So you got, is this the actual guitar that you found, the two of the four? Yeah, see the two top two guitars, they were four separate guitars. I mean, literally think of like, like uh, for lack of a better way, like rifles, four rifles. And then I had back plates, it's, it's Mikey engineering. And then I, I, the back plate dictated the shape because I found on tour, that wasn't a good shape to play. It looked good on, on video, but I had two on each side like this and then no, the all i had to do was make a back plate there were there were three screws in each guitar and you would you would just make the back plate how you want it and and as long as the screws lined up like we had i had a one one double guitar from the two top ones i could make a single triple quad i could do anything i wanted the back plate dictated the shape it's really cool wow well, wow, okay, sorry, the chat is saying, get that guitar out. Everyone really want to see this. Whatever, you know, the, the top two. Can you bring it out, please, please? Yeah, please. yeah, do you, should, I, should I bring them down or do you want me to actually bring my camera upstairs? I can bring it into the living room with all the guitars in there. If you would like to do that, I would love to see it. We'd love to see it, okay, whatever way it works for you. This yeah, is amazing. This is like backstage at the Shred okay. Vault. Hey now. I'm in this guitar room. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> uh, okay, wait. You guys say I Let have me. a lot of guitars. Did you? Can can you? <laughs> this this is insanity. I don't have that many guitars at all. <laughs> <laughs> I've got about 170. Oh my god! Yeah. I got 155. So uh, so can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> uh, John Petrucci just said that he doesn't like to own. He doesn't like guitars like that. He only likes his own. But I, I think that's great. But. I kind of like having a lot of guitars. Okay, this is the bad boy here. Now, it's really hard to see. Can you see that? Yeah. Can you see those yeah, two? Yeah, yeah, we see it. Yeah. That's, that's all that's left of the quad. But see this? Now, this was originally built by Gibson. Check out this trem. Count wow. them. Seven strings. So I was one of the first guys to play. And see it says Ritz? Wayne Charvel built it, and uh, he built it. It actually originally said Gibson. It was built. It was a Gibson, but then he started his own company, and he asked me if he could change the next to Ritz. I didn't really like the name, but you can see it's the guitars are pretty beat up. Um, so I have this is the left-handed one, and then I have the right-handed one. Or I'm sorry, no, this is the right-handed, and then let me. Uh, this is amazing. I hope you guys are having fun. Oh, I mean, I hope you guys are having as much fun as me. This is incredible. I never thought I'll see something so cool. Wow. <laughs> Thanks. And then this is the left-handed guitar. Again, see, look at the springs are all gone. Mm -hmm. I bought it back in, in this condition. It just got mangled over the years. But I, I had, and so <laughs> that's, that's what it is. And so, and then to put them together, let's take this. See, all I needed was a back plate. So see, in freight train, you see one, one of the guitars that looks like this. So see, I'm sorry, there are four screws. 
So if I made a backplate that had two guitars like this, that's how I did it in concert. I had two, two and two. It was really awesome. And it was easy for me to play because the X-Wing fighter got to be kind of hard on certain stages. I, I wasn't too comfortable for me to do it. But I've got, a, and then I've got a lot of cool guitars in the collection. I like guitars, as you can see. Wow. But like I've got like old Fenders and... <laughs> And then I've got uh, this one I played. This is the guitar I actually played the Freight Train solo on. Uh-huh. This one this one is, uh, I got this as a gift. It's a 29 fret Washburn. Uh-huh. And I'd never seen uh, 29 frets before. And that's how I got the idea to make the rocket. And so uh, this is the, so what I did was <laughs> I had this modified. And uh, that's it. Wow, that, that is insane. Hey, what song you guys want to do? What guys you guys want us to do? Chat. You guys want no boundaries, I know it. I love that song. So the, the story on this, you said that you was written like an exercise at the beginning. Can you tell us a bit more about how this song came about? Yeah, you know, one of the things that that I learned in school, for example, let's take Bach. When he wanted students to learn pieces of music, he would write things like two-part inventions. He would write pieces of music that kind of show the technique. So not only are you learning different techniques on piano, but you're learning a piece of music. So I thought, well, if it was good enough for you, Anne, you know, let me try this. So what I did was I, I wrote No Boundaries part after part after part like there's no real order to it other than it's a party song part after part after part and you know a lot a lot of what i showed you know the arpeggios uh you know the you know legato parts uh string skipping uh, all these things are are in no boundaries and so and i and i wanted to show kind of like in in three minutes and 45 seconds or four minutes what what i was going to teach and so, you know, and it was the era of MTV. It was already really huge. You know, it was, you know, towards the end of the metal era. We were like, when this was released, it was a year before grunge hit. So we were at the like pinnacle of shred at that time. And so, uh, but that's really what it was about. It was a song to help other guitarists. And then I, I, I started playing it live. Uh, I had to do a couple clinics. So uh, and, and I didn't even really know what clinics were at that time. I didn't do, I knew what they were. I didn't do many, but I played it and the response was great. They were like, what is that song you're playing? And so I just kept playing it. And that, that's, but it didn't, it started off as an exercise. So it's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we're going to do it, guys. We're going to do it. We're yes. going to do no boundaries. All right, let's make this happen. Woo. Okay, are we ready? We're ready. But first, I must assume the shred position. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Woo! That was fun. <laughs> wow, we did it. 